Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner and you're on stage five of Tour of the Basque Country. Disagreement and discord. That's what everything was about yesterday. Today we're a little more gelling between me and the commentators at GCN. Brian Smith and I actually agreed on something on today's stage. Can you believe it? Stage starts, it's 160K, it's fast and hard, and a six-man group gets away. It's a strong six-man group. Behind in the field, you got EF Education chasing, Bike Exchanges chasing, Escatel Escadiz chasing, you have Israel Startup Nation chasing, you got all the teams back there. They got a lot of teams that want this to come back because they know it's the last chance to win a stage before we go into tomorrow's super hard 70 mile multiple hill summit finish day. The problem is when you look in the field, you have the best GC field in the world, right? I've been telling you guys this since day one. The problem is you got all these little guys who can climb, but you don't have anybody that can ride between the climbs on the flats and down the descents and stuff because all those guys are the classic specialists that are up north. So you got a light field when it comes time to pulling breakaways back. In the six-man group, you have two Dakuna quick step riders, and we all know those guys can ride flat out on any flat road there is and probably out pull anybody that's chasing them. It was a mistake in the back for the field to give the front guys that much time and not bring them back on the climb. They really needed that category one climb at the finish that summits with about 28K to go and to bring them back there so that you can use those guys that are good climbers and more GC guys to bring back guys from Dakuna Quick Step who can ride the flats. Now, we get onto the last climb and that's really where the action starts. It's the Kuna Quick Steps on a ray up there, throwing in a big dig and blowing the brake apart. He gets a gap on Julian Bernard, the Trek Sega Fredo ride, rider, and it's Cherny, the Kuna Quick Step sitting on his wheel, getting a draft while, he's, while the Trek Sega Fredo rider is trying to chase his teammate, the Kuna Quick Step, up the road. Cherney jumps off his wheel and bridges to his teammate up the road. Those two guys are trying to hold off Julian Bernard, but Julian Bernard does an amazing job of bridging back up to the two Dakuna quick step riders, and the three leaders go down the descent together and along the flat into the finish of today's stage. When they get to the bottom of the descent, they got about 19K to go, so this race is still not wrapped up, but you got the two of the best in the business at riding on the flats, Back in the field, they come down the descent. It's Astana throwing in a massive dig on the descent and just carving this thing up like a pizza cutter. They are drilling these corners left and right. This is where GCN commentator Brian Smith and I agree. We are completely on opposite ends of the pole yesterday. Today we're agreeing. Astana made a huge mistake here and it goes back to what I said. There's not much power in the field at the bass country to bring break back to bring breakaways back in line before the sprint the numbers are dwindling when the two astana riders broke off the front they just took more power away from the field we know that because when the field reaches the bottom with 19k 19k to go it's uae team emirates on the front that's the sign that the race is over and the two the Kuna Quick Step Riders with Julian Bernard are going to fight it out for the win. In the back, as soon as you see UA Team Emirates, you know the other sprinter teams have given up and now they have to get reorganized and that's going to allow that gap from one minute to stretch back out to 130 and that's the difference. Two Astana Riders, they tore up the descent. We loved watching it because it was magical to see them go through that corner but they could have been back there pulling the field, gaining time, and then they would, you would have had two more Astana riders pulling that field to bring back to Kuna Quick Step. I honestly think Astana stayed back there, they would have caught that breakaway, and that was the difference. The two breakaway, three breakaway riders up front, they're battling it in to just about 5K to go. When it's on array, the Dakuna Quick Step rider throws in a dig on the slight little rise there, and that really puts the nail into the legs of Julian Bernard as he tries to close it. Cherney jumps off his wheel, bridges up to his teammate, and now it's a two-man Dakuna Quick Step time trial for 4.5K to the line. They'll come to the line together with Honoré winning it, but both these guys in my book get the victory. There is no way 
I would ever sprint against a teammate of mine to the line when you're going two up like that. You have to come across the line, arms raised together, and just decide further back down the road who is going to win today's stage. It keeps the chemistry in the team going all season long. It's a fantastic feeling when you can come to the line like that with a teammate. You do not want to mess it up with sprinting each other to the line to figure out who's going to win today's stage. It'll cause drama throughout the rest of the season and throughout the whole of the team. It was a fabulous way to win today's stage five for Dakuna Quick Set. Now behind, they're just going to come in, okay? Yesterday, GCN talked about how Yumba Visma wouldn't have to ride today's stage because they don't have the race leader's jersey. Well, the race leader's jersey, UAE Team Emirates didn't have to ride either because no GC team ever has to ride on a flat stage of the Basque Country because there is only one flat stage, flat stage, that could be set up for the sprinters. That was today. You know all the other teams were going to ride ahead of the GC teams on a stage like today. Now let's talk about tomorrow's stage because that is a big stage. And here's the problem for Yumbo Visma. Yesterday, we all heard it. If you didn't agree with my tactic, you believe it was a great tactic to give away the jersey so that you didn't have to ride on the last mountain stage of here at the Basque Country. Here's the problem. 23 seconds. Yumbo Visma's Primoz Roglic last 23 seconds to Brandon McNulty on the race lead of yesterday's stage. Now, tomorrow, they need time bonuses. When you need time bonuses, that means your team has to ride tomorrow, okay? UAE team members, they're not going to care about time bonuses. Are they going to have to patrol the top 7, 8 on GC? For sure, if they're in the breakaway. If they're not in the breakaway, UAE Team Emirates will not have to ride tomorrow because Yumbo Visma will have to ride tomorrow if the other teams have any intelligence at all, which we all know there's some debate about that. If Yumbo Visma wants the 10 second time bonuses and they're going to need it, tomorrow's final climb is super hard, but it's not crazy long, 5, 6K, something like that if I remember correctly. It's a famous climb. They use it all the time. I've gotten beat by Samuel Sanchez on this stage at least two times that I can remember. So I have some good memories on this stage and I got some bad memories on this stage. But one thing's for sure, the stage is not long enough. At 70 miles, Brandon McNulty will have fresh legs when he arrives at the bottom of the last climb. That means the difference between Brandon McNulty and Primoz Roglic is that much closer. Primoz Roglic, Jumbo Visma team is gonna have to drill it at, that, at the bottom of that climb to get maximum time that they can and put the, start putting nails into Brandon McNulty. They might even have to start the climb before. But they need the 10 second time bonuses. So if you see them chasing all day tomorrow, it's because they can't allow a breakaway to get up the road because they need the 10 second time bonuses in order to win this. So yesterday's philosophy of giving the stage away and giving the race leader's jersey away so that they don't have to ride on stage six and defend is false. We may still, still see them riding all day long to control tomorrow's stage for time bonuses. UAE Emirates might have a free ride this whole week at the tour of the Basque Country. Now, when we get on the climb, here's the drama for tomorrow's stage. Primoz Roglic, like I said, has to go early. Tade Pogacar, and this is the Basque Country, so decisions have to be, be made fast and you have to live with them right away. Tade Pogacar either has to go with Primoz Roglic if Brandon McNulty drops early or halfway up the climb. If Brandon McNulty drops 1K before the top of the climb and Primos is attacking him and going up the road, at that moment, it's too late for Tadej Pogacar to gain the time back on Primos Roglic. He's better off staying with Brandon McNulty. If Brandon McNulty drops right at the bottom, he's got a Tadej Pogacar has to go with Roglic. And then he has to drop him before the top and gain those seconds back over him and try to win this race for UAT Emirates. But guys, it's a nail biter. The decision has to be made perfect and right at that moment. You won't have time to second guess yourself. Brandon McNulty has to tell Tadej Pogacar, stay with me or go with Primos. That's it. Those are the only decisions being made. Brandon has to say, I got good legs, stay with me, we can bring him back. There's a little bit of a roller, it's not flat to the finish. I would say it's about 3K to the finish after the top. So you have a little bit of time to bring back 5, 10 seconds if you're lucky and you're working together. 
If Brandon McNulty and Tadej Pogacar are working together, that's a strong force to bring back some time on one Primoz Roglic. There's not going to be much more riders up there with Primoz if Brandon's not there and Tadej Pogacar is not there. They're the best in the world. The gap should be small. It's going to be an exciting stage, but look for <laughs> Jumbo Visma having to chase all day tomorrow just to keep the ability to gain 10-second time bonuses on the line. Hope you like today's butterfly effect. Remember, if Jumbo Visma do not win tomorrow and take home this yellow jersey, they got the walk of shame. What's the walk of shame? All these pro riders fly out of the same airport on the last day, pretty much. So when we finish the bike race, we all wrap up the bikes, we shower in the bus, we wrap, mechanics wrap up the bikes, they hand you your bikes, you jump in the car and you drive to the airport and you're going to see 30, 50, 60 riders at the airport most times right after the stage of the finish. So Jumbo Visma, the walk of shame is going to be walking through those airport doors when you got to sit there in line with 40 other cyclists and you just lost the Basque Country because you wanted to give it away on stage five. On stage four, you wanted to give it away so that you didn't have to ride on stage six. I don't believe any of that. That was just bad tactics. Hope you like the butterfly effect, and I'm going to see you guys real soon because tomorrow is going to be the best stage we got at this year's Bass Country. Fast, furious, tune in, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you real soon.